Genital Herpes by Monica Darville Martinez. Beginnings of Mathematical Ethiology. Bernoulli, 1760, Daniel Bernoulli form, formulated and solved a model for smallpox in 1760. Using his, his model, he evaluated the effectiveness of healthy people against small, the smallpox virus. Hammer, 1906. Hammer formulated and analyzed a discrete model in 1906 to understand the recurrence of measles epidemics. Ross, 1911. Ross developed differential equation models for malaria as a host vector disease in 1911. He won the second Nobel Prize in medicine. Kermack and McKendrick, 1926. Extended Ross's model, obtained the ep epidemic threshold results. How will the disease attack? Genital herpes attacks the external nervous system during primary infection. During primary infection, the disease remains inactive for a long time. Eventually, the infected individual is not infectious. Then the virus will become re reactive during a few days. Finally, the infected individual will be infectious for the disease. S, which is susceptible, which goes to the infected. Susceptible, infected. So that begins the beginning of our model. And then we will divide. We will divide into two compartments. As Pyramus mentioned, that. so one of our compartments is going to be susceptible S of T and infected. I of T. An academic model for general herpes, we already stated as previously before, as susceptible and effective. Then I'm going to have a gamma S here in the middle. And then we'll make our assumptions for our model. Assumptions for our model. Assumption number one, population size is large and constant. Population size is large and constant. Okay? And, and so we'll have S of T plus I of T is equal to N of T. That's our first assumption. Our second assumption will be no bird in this compartment model, no birds, no deaths, immigration, or emigration. And our third assumption for this two compartment model is no recovery included. And our fourth assumption for this would be no um, homogeneous mixing. And then our fifth assumption is going to be infection rate is proportional to the number of infected. Our infection rate is proportional to the number of infected. So we'll use gamma is equal to 
B I so I infection rate is equal to the amount of infections. Gentle to herpes. Most people usually are normally would not find out they have general herpes unless they have a doc a visit to their doctor's office. The CDC has studied this disease for the last 46 years, from 1966 to 2011. The relative standard errors for genital herpes estimates of more than 100,000 range from 18% to 30%. We consider the spread of a disease and a uh, population. Okay, what we will have to consider in our cases would be A. We will also consider the size of the population and will remain fixed, okay, and B, the size of the population is large enough, the size of the population is large enough enough that the error will approximate that the error will approximate approximate 1 over n minus 1 with 1 over n would be small. And C, this is our part C, we have two classes of individuals. individuals. We have two classes of individuals. Those who have the disease, have the disease, and those who do not have the disease. But are susceptible but are susceptible to get the disease. is modeled as we make a random selection a uh, random selection between two individuals. Mm -hmm. 
from a population. Finally, one is susceptible and one is infected and the susceptible susceptible will become or might become infected. S of T plus I of T given the initial number of infectives which is I sub zero. Now let's find what happens to T. Now Let's find out what happens. Find out what happened to I of T. We will create a differential equation that models the herpes disease. We will create a D E E Q that represents the H S V two disease. Assumptions. We will pick two people. We will pick two people for our assumption in our model. So our question would be, once we pick these two people for our model, we ask the question, what is the probability, probability of picking a susceptible person and what would be what? The probability of picking a probably of picking a susceptible person would be would be s over n and the probability of picking an infected person and the probability of picking a infective person would be 1 over n. Assumptions. Are made. And these events are independent.
of each other. We choose a susceptible individual and the probability the second individual will be affected is 1 over n minus 1 because n is bigger we simplify we simply we pardon me we simply divide by n Therefore, we have 1 over n once we divide. The probability that two random people will consist of one infective and one susceptible. So from the end population where we have one over n minus one or one over n where n is the total population. So we so we write the equation therefore we create it create a d E equation of the model. So our D equation we, we coming up with will be two over S over N, where one over N is equal to Two over n square s i. The equation shows shows the uh, the average number. of SI interactions per interactions in 
a given population. Assume that the two C gamma all over N square S I gives the number of SI interactions per unit <coughs> time. Two. Therefore, the average number of infectives per unit time will give us two C gamma all over n square and in parentheses s i the rate of which so three the rate mm -hmm. at which i of t is increasing Is increasing will give us R, which is equal to two C gamma all over N square S I or beta is equal to 2 C gamma over N squared S I. So, therefore, beta is equal to R. And R represents the infection rate. So therefore, beta is our infection rate. Beta is our infection rate. We already established that already. Then, the infection rate for I of T which is infectives, is equal to di over dt, okay? Which is equal to rsi. Or i of t is equal to di over dt, which equals Beta S I. Infection <laughs> rate equals beta S of T I of T where beta is the infection constant. But 
14, slide 14. Slide 14, <laughs> take one. <laughs> the rate where, where I of T is increasing will give us R is equal to 2C gamma all over N squared SI or beta is equal to 2C gamma all over N squared. We have two equate two 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 different forms of the same thing, but we're gonna stick with the beta form right here. So then the equation I at T will become di all over dt which is equal to rsi or di over dt which equals to beta si we have two cases, infective, susceptible, and therefore we gain and, and I will represent an equal loss in S. Any gain and infectious will equal will be an equal loss in susceptible. So gain and infective will represent Uh, equal loss with susceptibles. Now we get the following. Non linear D E equation that can be solved. So now we will get D of S over D of T which equals to negative RSI or D of S over D of T, which equals a negative beta SI. We first will check and find out the total population will remain constant for our model. So we will add two differential equations so when we add the two differential equations we will get d of s over d of t which is equal to negative beta 
S of T, I of T, plus DI over DT, which equals beta S of T, I of T. Therefore, D of S over D of T plus D of I over D of T will be added together. Once we add those together, we get equals beta S of T I of T plus Sorry, that plus. Pardon me. Minus beta S of T I of T. Which is all going to be equal to zero. Since I of T plus S of T is a constant. Now we can integrate. Now we can integrate. Now we integrate from zero to t. So now when we integrate from zero to two, we get s of t plus i of t. which is going to be equal to S of 0 plus I of 0, okay? Therefore, the initial or start population in our model and shows us S of T plus I of T equals N where N is the total population and now we are going to, to substitute. So we're going to substitute S into the equation. So we're going to substitute S into the equation. And when we substitute S, in the equation, we're going to get S is going to equal to N minus 1. We substitute S is equal to N minus 1. So this is what we're going to do. We have DI over DT, which is going to equal to beta SI with N minus 1. We will get a single equation once we complete our substitute 
method. So once you complete our substitute method, we'll get a single equation for population I of T. Once you do that, we're going to get DI over DT, which is going to equal to beta, and then in parentheses, and minus 1, and then I. Okay, a pair of DE equations. Well, we came about already. So S prime of T is going to equal to negative beta I of T, S of T, and I prime of T is going to equal to beta I of T, S S of T. With the constant population size at N, which where N is going to equal to S of T plus I of T. This reduces to I prime of T, which equals I of T N minus 1, and minus 1, and minus 1, no, and minus 1, I of T, and all in parentheses. The solution will be a logistic curve. The solution is going to be a logistic curve. So what is it? So I of T is going to equal I, okay, of zero to the N all over I of zero plus n minus i sub zero on um, right this then we're gonna have e which is a natural log to the negative beta n to the t so we're gonna have i I of zero not to the n, I of zero not plus n minus i to the initial, all in parentheses, the natural log of e to the power of negative beta and to the t. So di all over dt is going to equal negative beta n minus 
want I. Okay. All over I. Shows. Us. A logistic. Equation. That has. The carrying capacity has the carrying capacity N. Where T goes to infinity. Therefore, the SI model of herpes simplex will show us that everyone catches the disease and will stay infected. And will never die from the disease. I, the carrying, we all are familiar with the carrying capacity equation where dp over dt is equal to kp, parentheses 1 minus p over n. We choose, I chose, or we choose to use this model to represent HSV2 disease. So therefore, I'm simplifying from the last time I spoke with you guys. D of I all over D of T is going to equal beta I of T all over N in parentheses N minus I of T. And then we close parentheses again. So this is going to equal beta N I of T or 1 minus I of T all over N, and that's closed in parentheses. Therefore, S is equal to N minus 1, and I is going to equal to N minus S. We chose to have two effective population using this logistic equation. So therefore, we come up with this logistic equation where I, my marker went in, I of T is going to equal, so we show the effective population is equal to N all over 1 plus N minus 1 E to the minus beta N of T. So this is our final. You see how similar that is to that one? So we have I of T is equal to N, which is the total population, 1 plus N, which is the total population again, minus 1 
all over the natural log or e raised to the negative beta and sub t. And t represents the time and represents the total population. And we know beta is our constant rate, contact rate. So I have logistic curve. So when we draw out the logistic curve, my drawing might not be that great. The susceptible population it's going to be increasing while the effective population is going to be decreasing. And this is my high logistic curve. This is the logistic curve that represents the equation we just completed. So, I'm going to mark this part below. This is, the, this is S of I and this is T. So our susceptible population is increasing and our infected population is decreasing. So I, so that's, that's decreasing and our susceptible population is increasing. And, our, and then we have an equilibrium point right here. This is for our logistic curve for our SI model of genital herpes. The graph of genital herpes SI model shows us that the infective curve as atomically approaches the total population and from below. Therefore, the curve decays to zero. When the disease-free state S is equal to N and I is equal to zero, which is unstable and as, as topically the entire population gets the disease. I is equal to zero and S is equal, is equal to zero, therefore the current capacity for the logistic growth equation. The logistic curve graph for the SI model shows us that the total population where the number of susceptibles plus the number of infectives. If you look at the graph, each curve starts at time zero. We see the amount that are infective initially in both compartments. The model graph shows us that the spread of the disease cannot start unless at least one person is spreading it. The graph shows us that when people become sick the fastest, and this only happens if there is an equal amount of sick, healthy people. On the graph, the maximum rate of infection is where the slope is the steepest, at the inflection point in the middle intersection. As the infective curve asymptomically approaches the total population and from below. Furthermore, the susceptible curve decays to zero and the epidemic never ends. Therefore, the graph shows us an exponential decay down to zero. Limitations of, mod of the model. The classic model assumes that the total population size remains constant. They assume that the population is uniform and homogeneous mixing. Mixing depends on many factors, including age. Different geographic and socioeconomic groups have different contact rates. These models ignore random effects which can be very important when S or I are small through in the early stages. Conclusion. Different um, models can be constructed by choosing different number and types of compartments. Analysis based on theory of dynamical systems. Modeling classic clarifies that the underlying assumptions are model analysis and stimulation prediction suggestions, critical data, and should be gathered. Model analysis and stimulation suggest control strategies that could be implemented.